Hi and welcome or welcome back to the Sisters of the Channel. You're all staying safe and well and an episode of the Kids of 86, yeah, where we look at all the guys who obviously took part in that FA Youth Cup winning team and many, many went on to play for the first team, of course. So today we're looking at, well, yeah, old tree trunk legs himself. Uh, we mean that very affectionately, of course. Steve Redmond, yeah, the Kids of 86, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, somewhat special this one because uh, he, unlike some of the others, he was actually quite a big thing in the first team. The same, the same season, he was actually played in the FA Youth Cup as well. It became an integral part of the, the City team that season. But let's talk about him, shall we? Steve Redmond, yes, the old tree trunk legs, uh, massive. I mean, if you look at someone like Jack Grealish now, his he's, he's, he's calves, etc. I mean, obviously, uh, Steve Redmond's legs were massive, weren't they? And he was a fit lad as well. Yeah, he didn't... didn't uh, some of these big lads suffer a lot of injuries, certainly not Steve Redmond, but hey, we'll get on with it. Born in Liverpool... He signed schoolboy forms with City in October 1982. Yes, oh, happy days. Choosing City ahead of his own some hometown club, and he was a fan of, he used to stand on the cot watching Liverpool. Uh, his idols were people like Kenny Dalgleish, Alan Hansen. Uh, most of his family, or almost all his family, including his granddad, who was more into football perhaps than, than he was, uh, were Evertonians, so he sort of was a bit alone there picking Liverpool. But he decided early on to take his, that his chance of progression at City would be far, far better than either Liverpool or Everton. And that when he'd been asked over to City, he'd always been treated very well, and he, he liked the youth set up, and that's probably what, that's what convinced him. Not probably, that's what did convince him to join City. Obviously, with a better chance of getting on. You know, not, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Probably a good thing, but uh, it could be a, uh, thought as a bad thing as well. As a schoolboy, he was actually not a bad little goal scorer. He didn't score many goals for City while he was here, but he hit 66 goals in 24 games at schoolboy level for uh, Liverpool. Uh, as a junior, he played for Blue Star, uh, a Manchester City-affiliated team based in Cheadle, and his Blue Star teammates included such things as we're going to talk about in this Kids of 86, Paul Lake, Andy Inchcliffe, Ian Brightwell. He signed his first professional contract in November 1984. Redmond was part of a promising group of young players at the time. I think up to seven features in a game at one stage uh, from the same intake. He and Paul Molden were the first to play for the first team. As I said, Steve Redmond sort of um, didn't play every game that, towards the end of the season, this first season, 85-86, but he played a, a reasonable proportion of the, near the end. And he obviously broke into the first team with Paul Molden. So on to season 85-86. His debut came in February 1986. An ankle injury to Mick McCarthy. And he got his debut against Queen's Park Rangers. And uh, yeah, thanks to a goal-saving tackle, his confidence was boosted. Yeah, it just, it goes on to describe it. Obviously, it's like describing a city, a city thing, this. Uh, Paul Power put across our box. And Clive Wilson was running into a run to, running onto it dangerously, and he said, "I just managed to get out, get a slide tackle in, and come away with the ball. If I'd missed it, it would have been a goal. And winning that tackle gave gave me the confidence, uh, gave my confidence a real boost. From there, everything seemed to go right." Peter Gardner, right for the Manchester Evening News at the time, said of Steve Redmond's debut. As impressive as any I've seen by a City player in 20 years. And he'd watched a lot of football, Peter Gardner. His next game was sort of a homecoming, as mentioned. He was a, he was the exception as a Liverpool fan in his family, uh, especially his granddad, who was an Evertonian. So he took a bit of stick, yeah, when City were panned 4-0 at Goodison on the 11th of February, so that didn't go down too well. Uh, he got a bit of a hiding for that one. And with the return of Mick McCarthy, yeah, I mean, he didn't immediately drop down to the subs bench or out of the squad. Uh, he took Kenny Clements' spot at number four and earned a three, three star man performances for City in the games he played. It was a fantastic baptism, if you think about it. Within six weeks of his debut, he was playing in a derby match at Old Trafford in front of over 51,000 uh, fans. Uh, he visited... Uh, obviously, he was sorry. He went from there. He went the next day, of course. Uh, the famous or infamous, if you like, members' cup final at Wembley the following day in front of sixty-eight thousand. So he went to that as well. Unfortunately, we lost that one, didn't we? And on March the thirty-first, just over a week later from the Wembley trip. 
It wasn't getting any easier. Yeah, we had to visit Anfield. He visited Anfield, his boyhood club, and we lost two 0 But it was it was a highlight for Steve Redmond, of course, because he came up against one of his idols, Kenny Dalglish, and again, uh, not just for sentimentality, was City's standout player on the day, even though we got beat. He was uh, captain of the youth team, of course, as well uh, as uh, played in the first team. And we beat local rivals United over two legs in the FA Youth Cup final, which is why we get this. Why I have this little little thing about the, the kids of 86. And the picture there of Redmond lifting the trophy that featured on the last programme of the season against Luton Town. So an amazing start by anyone's uh, estimations. Uh, absolutely brilliant. Billy McNeil said of the youngsters in his end of season notes. I've got his uh, the match day programme, that aforementioned one against um, uh, Luton Town. Uh, this is just Billy McNeil talking about Steve Redmond. When put to the test, the youngsters met the challenge well. Youth team captain Steve Redmond had the longest senior run taking over from Clements, and he did particularly well. It was a well-earned reward that the lad led his teammates in the youth team to a first-ever final success for City. Last Tuesday night, I see no reason why he should not go from strength to strength, and he has answered the key questions about how he would acquit himself at the highest level. Yes, he was, he was doing very, very well. In the 1986, we progressed to the next season, 86-87 season. In, in match two, yeah, it was a better day against his old idol, Kenny Dalglish. This time, as City and Redmond claimed a nil-nil draw against reigning champions Liverpool. Yet again, he was City's best player on the day. Manager McNeil was happy with young Steve Redmond. He said in early September 1986, it's astonishing to think that he's only 18 years old. He's a very mature individual and is undoubtedly international material for the future. He's carried on illustrating his potential just as he did last year. On the 21st of December, Redmond scored his first First goal, his first and second goal in the same game. A 2-2 draw at Coventry City. And he was playing in midfield that day as the team was a little bit injury hit. We were actually 2-0 down. He brought it back to 2-2. Uh, we did it, it wasn't all it wasn't all hype about Steve. He did he did uh, get a bit of stick for the dar, the FA Cup match at United in the third round of the FA Cup that season. Sadly, it was he, he failed to clear his lines quick enough. He got caught in possession and we conceded the only goal of the game. We lost 1-0. So as I say, it was it was down to Steve, but he was certainly picked the next week. It wasn't held against him, that's for sure, as he'd been doing some great stuff. A City struggled, yes, at the wrong end of the table. A 1-0 home defeat, this time to Redmond's Liverpool, even though we'd drawn at their place. He was still hopeful. He was in some programme notes. He was still hopeful that City could get to a respectable position in the table. But that hope was sadly unfounded as City only finished above one team that season, and that was Aston Villa. It was actually the first season of the playoffs as well, and the, the third bottom team actually got into the playoffs to stay up. Uh, we finished second bottom, so Mr Swells was a little bit unhappy at that. He had he had intimated that he wouldn't mind a little money spin at the playoffs, but uh, we weren't even good enough to get that. Redmond, though, did escape, I say, apart from that derby game, uh, did escape any real criticism overall as the club came, uh, obviously, to the delight of his family. Obviously, the Evertonians, it was Everton who took that 86-87 title. So even though it was a bit down for Steve Redmond himself and City went down, obviously his family were quite chuffed. Redmond made 32 first-team appearances uh, that 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 season, mainly at centre half, but he also played as a sweeper and he was also, as mentioned, played as a midfielder. And he actually also played enough reserve matches uh, that season to claim a Central League winner's medal as well. So he'd actually been active in the reserves. Redden received a call up to the England under 19s that season for a tour of South America. On to 87-88. In the second division, yeah, Redmond was first choice centre-half, started every game, every game that season, and that included, of course, a 10-1 victory against Huddersfield Town. Steve was well used used to playing in various positions when asked, and on December the 5th against Crystal Palace, he, he, even, he, even he got asked to play in an odd position. Uh, Eric Nixon got himself sent off the keeper. 
and he actually went in net. Although we were actually winning and doing very, very well, sadly, uh, Palace put three past <laughs> put three past Steve Steve Redmond. We conceded three goals, but he was still given City star man ratings, so that's not too bad. He was having a fantastic game outfield, apparently, uh, and he couldn't really be blamed for any of the goals. So. Even though we got beat three one, he played in goal. Um, yeah, and he was our star man. There will be probably probably be a you need hands feature on that one day as well, just a little bit more detail on that match. In fact, between the fifth of December and the twelfth of January, nine games played. Yeah, we weren't fantastic. We'd won two, drew two, and lost five. But he'd actually in those nine games won the City Star Man Award in the match day program. He won it six times out of that nine games, and over the season he won it twelve in total. So it's no big surprise at the end of the season that he was voted the club's player of the year. And club captain Kenny Clements left City in the nineteen eighty eight close season. So Redmond was appointed as his successor as captain at a very early age. So at twenty, yes, yeah, so we're going to the eighty eight eighty nine season. So at 20, he became the club's youngest ever captain Well, Mel, when Mel Machin gave him that responsibility. Redmond said at the time, I was so surprised. I never expected that in my wildest dreams. It was the first time I'd ever been made captain of anything. I was never what you would call a natural leader at school or in the youth team. It was quite a way to start as captain of City. And soon after, Dave Sexton, who was in charge of the England under-21s at the time, uh, made him captain of the under-21 England team as well. He took on the role, and yeah, his other hero, of course, I mentioned earlier, didn't we? was Alan Hansen. So obviously, he tried to uh, bring out the inner Alan Hansen in his role as captain. And he, he got a new defensive partner as well with the arrival of Brian Gale, and they, they established quite a good partnership at the back. As we pushed for promotion, uh, obviously he put most of it down to the team spirit and a, and a fairly young team, as you know, at that time. Um, and Steve, Steve Redmond said most of us have been together for a long time. He said there's been a lot of working for each other and that must be a good sign. He managed one goal that season, a 2-1 win over Oxford at Main Road on November the 26th. And again, he started every single match, league and cup. No injuries, there's pretty fit lad, as Manchester City gained promotion to the first division behind Chelsea that season. On to the 89-90 season. Uh, a third season, the third season is never present, followed 89-90 as City had to cope with a manager change as well and a tough return to the top flight. Machin had stuck around until late November, but one of the last things he did was actually remove the captaincy from Steve Redmond. He said it uh, he said, much to Steve's surprise, that it was affecting his play towards the end of the previous season. And if you look back at some of the some of the reports on how he was playing, it was possibly right. It probably dipped a little bit towards the end of the season. And if Machen gave it to gave a captain captain's armband to Brian Gale. New manager, though, Howard Kendall wasted no time in returning the captaincy to Steve. So once Machen had gone, he got it back off uh, Howard Kendall. And if Steve did comment that psychologically it sort of give him, give him a boost, give him confidence, and that the uh, that the new manager was happy with him. And as I say, he played him every every game as well. So he was, he was well chuffed about that. And, uh, yeah, Redmond had been in a relegation dogfight before, but Kendall had brought experience as well, hadn't he? He brought some older heads in. So we were able to sort of, sort of just dip in, but be able to get out as well. And this young squad that obviously Machen had relied on there, Kendall, of course, managed to bring in some older heads to it. And, of course, there's a, lot, a few more scousers. Obviously, Kendall dipped into his Everton pool, didn't he? So, obviously, addition of a few more scousers to City's cause as well. And that throughout that season, players came and went. And the only ever present, he was only ever present around the ground in the starting 11 all season. And with Alan Harper brought in, playing as a sweeper, Redmond and Colin Henry began to forge a new solid centre-back centre partnership. His highlights that season were obviously the 5-1 humbling of United. Yes, the massacre, the main road massacre, we called it, didn't we? And a 2-1 win at Villa on April the 1st, who at the time were going for the title. It surprised everyone, that one. So King of the Kipax, issue 11. Yeah, back issue 11, the class of 89-90. This was said about uh, Steve Redmond's season. The ever-present was reinstated as captain when Brian Gale left. 
goodish season for Steve, one of the remaining five oneers, cutting down the, the lapses and improving with the influence of Peter Reid. No goals, though, when he's capable of scoring. Well, he did get one. He's capable of scoring. You st- I think he did. I was at like one before. I'm not too sure. You'll, you'll know better than me. I can't remember if it was the season before. Uh, no goals on. He's capable of scoring. Used to kick asses when he first came into the team as a young lad. Mark Hughes has a big one to aim at. Go for it. Well, there you go. Bit, bit of a dig at uh, Mark Hughes. Yeah, obviously, he scored the goal in the 5-1, didn't he? So, on to 89-90 season. That was, sorry, 89-90 season, he made 45 total appearances. So that's the league and the FA Cup. And what we'll do, we'll finish it there. We'll finish part one. There'll be a part two where we're going to look forward to, obviously, season 1991 as uh, Steve starts uh, to make a, his last his last, uh, his last last appearances for City. And, of course, uh, there would be another man- another manager change. Wouldn't there? Obviously, Kendall's there doing his bit, but he, well, that wouldn't last for long. Let's see how Steve copes with that. So join me in part two as you look forward to his uh, last couple of seasons at City and a little bit on what went wrong and, and why it went wrong uh, with some information from Paul Hintz. Yeah, some articles from Paul Hintz. So join me for part two of this uh, Kids of 86, this look at Steve Redmond's time at City. Thanks for watching. Please, until we meet again, please, all I ask is stay safe. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.